Come and listen to the story about a man named... It's easy. I just throw this stick out yonder. You pick it up and fetch it back. Okay? Well, we'll do it again. Go on, boy. Get it. Fetch it, dude. Fetch it. Fetch it. <laughs> All right, I'll show you. Just once more now. now you watch. <laughs> Catch on, dude. Catch on, boy. <laughs> do it once more. Fetch it, dude. Get it! Come on! Get it! Shucks! You know something, Uncle Jeff? That there is a real dumb dog. Well, I don't think he's so dumb, Jeff. Phil. He just learned you how to fetch sticks for him. But the dog is the one that's supposed to do the fetching. Why, there's a fella down the street that has a dog that fetches sticks for him all day. Well, next time you want some sticks fetched, go down the street and let that dog fetch him. <laughs> just don't care nothing about it. <laughs> Ted, do you want some vittles today? I do, Granny. I've worked up a right smart appetite fetching sticks for old Duke. <laughs> Ted, that's the trouble around here. The critters are taking over. Ellie Mae has done made pets out of everything but my pickled turnips. What's we gonna do for vittles? Hey. I remember something Mr. Drysdale told us when we first moved in here. What's that? He said any time Granny didn't feel like cooking, there were some folks that'd fetch food over to us. Here in Beverly Hills? <laughs> yes, ma'am. All you got to do is call them on the telephone and tell them what you want. Well, now, he's... that's mighty neighborly. You recall her name, Jethro? Let's see. Uh, Cater. We call her first name? <laughs> it's a woman. Beverly. <laughs> Beverly Cater? Must be a winter woman. She's the best cook, Dad. They have more time. Well, let's call up the winter and see what she's got cooking today. Now, just a minute, Jed. I want it made clear that I'm going to do something for her in return. Oh, naturally. We don't take charity. Come on, Duke. Let's try it again. <laughs> oh, honey, Miss Operator. This here is Jed Clampett. Well, I'm wanting to call a widow caterer. Beverly's a Christian name. I don't rightly know what her late husband was called. Anyway, she's the one that cooks the food and takes it around to folks. Yes, ma'am, that's it. Beverly Caterer. Oh, caterers, is it? More than one. Looks like the widow's got some young'uns to help her. That's good, Jed. Most times they leave home. Just when you... Uh, well, thank you, ma'am. What was that you were saying, Granny? I was saying that most times the young'uns leave home. Just about the time that you're... <laughs> well, howdy to you, Miss Beverly Cater. This here is Jed Clampett. Sounds like a right friendly woman. Howdy, Beverly. This here's Granny. I'm a widow myself. And I was just saying to Jed, it's nice when the young'uns stay home to help you. So many times they leave, just when you need them most. <laughs> I'll let you women folks talk about the vittles, but first I just want to say if you ever need a fence mended or a well dug or any heavy work at all, you just call on Jethro and me. Now, here's Granny. Emily, what you got on the back of the stove this morning? I don't want to put you to no extra trouble. Huh? Well, me, I'm partial to baked possum, but we'll take jowls or fat back or sow belly. Any kind of meat will pleasure is considerable. <laughs> What's that? 
bunch of nuts. Well, you can send them along. And I'll tell you right now, the critters will get the bulk of them. Now tell me something we can do for you, honey. Do what? <laughs> I declare, Jen, I never knowed anybody could turn nasty quicker than her. What do I set her off? Hard to tell, Jed. A generous woman like her probably gets took advantage of a lot. And tired to boot, I reckon. Uncle Jed, I can't learn this dumb old dog to fetch his stick. Well, Duke ain't about to waste your time chasing a piece of wood. He's hunting dog. Well, can I take him hunting then? I'd like to see him chase something. Praise be! That's an idea that might put some fresh meat on our table. All right, boy. It makes more sense than fetching the stick, especially the Duke. You want to come along, Granny? No. I better stay here and guard my kitchen. Okay. Come on, Duke. Let's get the guns. Guard your kitchen against who, Granny? Against Ellie's critters. That's who. They's beginning to take over. Why, I can't hardly... <laughs> <laughs> that little rascal learned to open the icebox. Them's the last of my pickle paw paws. <laughs> oh, gee, thank goodness you're back. I didn't want to disturb you at the meeting, but your wife has been calling frantically. No, that woman gets hysterical over nothing. What's it now? Well, it seems there's a kangaroo in your backyard. You see, the slightest little... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? A kangaroo? Where did it come from? Australia. That's the only continent where... Oh, I know that. How did it get in my backyard? Well, your wife was rather incoherent, but Ravenswood said it's from the Second National Bank of Melbourne. Second National Bank. Oh, that's where Gene Sandbloom was transferred to from. <laughs> that explains his Christmas card. <laughs> May I share the humor of the situation, Chief? Well, I sent him an alligator wallet, so he said he was going to send me a kangaroo pouch. Kangaroo <laughs> pouch? <laughs> On the hoof, as it were. <laughs> Sandroom does have a sense of humor. Yes, we'll have the zoo pick it up. I'll call Margaret. Mr. Drysdale's office. Oh, Ravenswood. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Good, I'll tell Mr. Drysdale. Oh, and, and don't worry about the kangaroo. The zoo will take care of it. Right. Cheerio. <laughs> Ravenswood has your wife under sedation, and she's resting comfortably. Oh, good. A bit of mutton and Yorkshire pudding should hit the spot. You may be from down under, but we're all part of the empire. <laughs> oh, Brett, the zoo must have already come for you. Oh, I'm gonna cook up a rabbit stew. Soon as Jeff roast shoots me one or two. Then we'll all sit down to the table and we'll eat, then we'll eat. How's it going, Granny? Kid, did Jethro leave to go hunting yet? Yep. Well, he needn't have bothered. There's a jackrabbit out that, that high. <laughs> I tell you, I ain't touched a drop. And there is a giant jackrabbit out in our backyard, and it is this high. Granny, you and me have seen some good-sized jacks in our day, but not five foot tall. Kid, there's a lot of things we never seen back home that we are seeing out here. And that's one of them. A piano playing, icebox opener, Paul Paul Filford ape. All right, Granny. I'll go take a look at your jackrabbit. <laughs> Come on, you can see for yourself. He can jump over this house, I tell you, in one hop. Whereabouts is he? I don't know. But sure as I live and breathe, he was sitting right there, five foot tall and looking me in the eye. Five foot tall sitting, was he? Yes, he was. Where did that jackrabbit go? 
You, uh, why don't you look out front? Maybe you hopped over the house, just like you said. <laughs> you think I'm talking nonsense, but you'll see, because I'll find him. What's all she out about, Granny? Nothing. Don't tell her, Jed. I don't want her making a pet out of all that meat. Let me go in the kitchen and get out my biggest pot and start peeling taters. Lots of them. Here, Jack. Here, Jack. Here, Jack. Who's Jack, Paul? Never mind, Ellie. Just try to keep your critters from pestering yeah. Granny. You got her so upset, she's got into her jug, and now she's seeing visions. What kind of visions? Well, I reckon it's all right to tell you. Granny thinks she seen a five-foot jackrabbit. <laughs> Mr. Jack Rabbit. The weather's turned off real nice, ain't it? There's a mighty fine clover out there on the lawn if you want to fatten up. Uh, I mean, if you're hungry. Don't you go away. There's somebody I want you to meet. I'll be right back. Hey, Jed, come around and I found him come quick. <laughs> Giant Jack Rabbit. I bet you did. He's right out front. Come on, I'll show him to Maybe you. Maybe you better lay down a spell. No, no, he'll get away again. <laughs> All right, I'll take a look. <laughs> you see him, Jed? I lost my glasses. But he must be out there somewhere. Well, yeah, yeah, I see him. Is he out on the lawn eating clover? Red, big old pink jackrabbit. Pink! Now, don't get upset. There's other colors, too. There's a blue one. There's a green one. And here comes one with purple polka dots. Oh, I wish I could see him. What's that you say, Mr. Jackrabbit? All right, I'll tell her. He says he thinks you ought to go in and lay down. Yeah, I think I better had Jed. <laughs> Uh, howdy, Miss Jane. Oh, Jethro, and you've got a wonderful surprise. But why do you look so worried, noble beast? Because I can't find no good hunting place, that's why. And Granny gave the strict orders to bring home some meat. Oh, Jethro, food should never be a problem to people of your means. There are markets, supermarkets, caterers. Uncle Jed called that their Beverly Cater. He got Mean Mouth something awful. <laughs> mean Mouth? Yeah. He says she's the nastiest tempered woman that ever answered a telephone. Well, Mr. Drysdale shall hear of this. The bank has a substantial interest in Beverly Caterers. You wait here. Hello, Beverly Caterers. One moment, please. Hello. Have you spoken to a Mr. Jed Clamper today? What? What? <laughs> now, now, just a minute, young lady. What is your name? What do you mean, put and tame? <laughs> now, you put Mr. Tintman on the phone and tell him it's Milburn Drysdale calling. The nastiest tempered young woman I ever spoke to. Mm. Dad! Dad, come quick! He's back again! He went outside there. Go look quick, Jed. Who's that, Granny? The giant Jack Rabbit. Oh, him again. All right, where's the jug? What jug? The jug that rabbit keeps coming out of. The jug gives you that headache. I ain't touched the jug. I busted my head running into them curtains. Yeah, sure. Uh, they'll do it all right. <laughs> I gotta catch that giant jackrabbit. Where's my shotgun? Well, Jeff Thrill's got it out hunting. Well, then we gotta catch a snare and put a snare out for him. Granny, wouldn't you rather lay back down and let me bring you a nice big cup of black coffee? Now, I'm gonna catch that big giant... Rabbit, whether you help me or not, and I don't care. I'll help you. I'll help you. All right. Now, you get me a nice big stout rope and put some bait in the snare. Yeah, take about two dozen carrots for a rabbit that size. <laughs> now you're thinking straight. Yeah. Just took me a while. <laughs> the restitution is about to be made. Yes. Now, I'll give your Uncle Jed a message for Tell me. him that the young woman who was so rude on the telephone will arrive in person to offer her abject apologies. Yes. And tell Granny she needn't worry about food. The young lady will also bring with her a truck full of delicious piping hot vines and an assortment of tasty beverages, all of which will be offered at your pleasure. Yes. <laughs> Have I anything else to say, Miss Hathaway? No, no, Chief, I think you've said it all. That sure's gonna make Uncle Jed and Granny happy. Thank you, Mr. Drysdale. Not at all. Glad to do it. Now, let's see. If I was to tie another rope onto the bottom of that limb, 
pull it down, and then take my loop and put some carrots in it. Mm. Howdy, Mr. Jackrabbit. Would you like to step into my kitchen? <laughs> you ain't gonna get away from me again, I can tell you that. Now, are you gonna come peaceable? Or do I have to take you by force? Down, Granny. What's the matter now? The giant jackrabbit. I had him cornered, but he fist fought me. <laughs> fist fought you? Yes, he did. Now you go outside and belt him upside the door. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, where are you hiding them jugs? <laughs> to do no cooking. But like I said, that there Beverly Cater is going to bring over a whole truckload of viands and beverages. I ain't depending on nobody with a temper as bad as her. Besides, I don't need her viands. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to be eating high on the rabbit. Well, where'd you get all the rabbits? One rabbit, Jethro. One rabbit? <laughs> he must be a whopper. Remember those big mountain jacks we used to see back home? Yeah. I seen me a jackrabbit that could put a pair of them in his pocket. In his pocket? Sir, sure. he stands five feet tall and he has a pocket, right? You don't believe me, do you? Oh, yes, I do, Granny. No, you don't. Oh, Granny, I sure I do. No, you don't. All right, I don't believe you. How dare you call me a liar? <laughs> Mr. Tinsman, do I have to face Mr. Clampett all by myself? Yes, you do. You're the one who insulted him on the phone. And you're the one he'll expect an apology from. But he talked like a nut. <laughs> Miss Billington, a man as rich as Mr. Clampett may talk like an eccentric, but never like a nut. <laughs> I sure hope he'll forgive me. He'll forgive you. If he's anywhere between 15 and 95, he'll forgive you. <laughs> I'll take the food around to the kitchen. Uh, is Mr. Clampett at home? I'm Jay Clampett, come right in. This little fella don't say much, but he's right smart. <clears throat> Mr. Clampett, I'm here to apologize about the way I spoke to you on the telephone earlier today. Ooh. You're, uh, Beverly Caters. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, you're a deal younger than I figured. He prettier, too. Thank you. I'm awfully sorry about losing my temper when you called. Oh, now, now, I understand. Woman works hard all day, cooking, doing for others. Young is hanging on her apron, and she gets a mite waspish. And you not having a husband to help. Yes, that's right. I don't have a husband. How many youngins you got? Youngins? Helping you with the cooking and fetching over to your place. Oh, help. Uh, well, let's see. Seven. Seven? <laughs> well, you must be from our part of the country. Got started young, didn't you? <laughs> well, come on. Granny be wanting to meet you. She's out in the kitchen. I got you, you big overgrown rascal. Now you're coming into the house to tell you to jib. And then you're going into the stew. Where you're going? Oh, that's Mr. Tinsman at the back door. He's my boss. Come in, come in. I'm Jed Clampett. A real pleasure, Mr. Clampett. I'm Bill Tinsman. I hope everything has been straightened out and that Beverly Caterers will always be welcome in your home. Why, you bet you're lying. This is a mighty fine young woman. She says you're her boss. That is right. I own Beverly Caterers. <laughs> what tickets you say? Can you do that out here? <laughs> Why, of course. Oh, uh, Mr. Dreisel holds a small mortgage, but as soon as that's paid off, 
Uh, she's all mine. <laughs> now, that don't take the ham off the hog. Jed, Jed. Now, Jed, you can see I ain't been at no jug. Now, uh, these folks is Beverly Caters and Bill Tinsman. These are the ones that does all the cooking. I hope we can cook for you, Granny. You can commence with this one. I caught him, now you can cook him. <laughs> Why, you little varmint, you untied my giant jackrabbit. Giant jackrabbit? <laughs> yes, my giant jackrabbit. That's what I wanted you to cook for me. He stands about five foot tall, has brown eyes, and a pocket right here. Now, don't you go away. I'll go get him for you. <laughs> we'll be back directly. You all go in the parlor and let the little fella play piani for you. <laughs> You say eccentric? I still say nuts. I say you're right. Let's get out of here. I can't understand it. He was free. Why should he return? Something must have frightened him. I'll say if he prefers his crate to freedom, what could it have been? Hello, over there. Yes, Granny, what is it? You see anything of a jackrabbit? No, we haven't. You won't find any jackrabbits in Beverly Hills, Granny. I'll telephone the zoo, sir. I say there's a giant jackrabbit around here someplace, and I'm going to find him if it's the last thing I ever do. Sure you are, Granny. I'll come in and lay down. I'm going to get that nice Beverly Caters to make a poultice for your head. Granny! Granny, you caught something in your snire. See, Jed wanted to tell you. What'd she catch, Ellie? Jethro! Hey, Uncle Jed, he cut me down! <laughs> Uncle Jed! He cut me down! Hey, Uncle Jed! <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.